Welcome to Wadsworth History on the Film, a program presented by the Wadsworth Area Historical Society and designed to preserve the oral history of Wadsworth for posterity. Today we have four wonderful people from the class of 1956. That was a long, long time ago, but they still have some wonderful memories. And we're having a little bit of a confusion because we have a Ruth, Jan, Jan, and Ruth. <laughs> so we're going to have each Jan and each Ruth tell who she is, and then we're going to be pointing after a while so that the, the wrong Ruth or the wrong Jan doesn't respond when we ask a question. So let's start with Ruth Marin, Ruth, Ruth. Rexrode Marin, whom we've known for many, many years. Ruth, tell us a little bit about yourself. And then next door we have Jan Mater. Um, Nutter. Nutter, right. And then we have Jan uh, Mirjota um, Kitzmiller. And then the last Jan is J or Ruth is uh, Ruth Schaup Yarman. Y A R M A N. Correct. Right. <laughs> Correct. Now, I have them straight in mind, but we may, they may confuse themselves after a while. So, <laughs> this Ruth over here, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you were born and where you grew up and uh, who your neighbors were and things like that. Okay. Well, I was actually born in below New Philly, and I, we moved to Wadsworth from Dalton when I was in sixth grade. Mm -hmm. And we always lived on a farm. Where? On right where Cole's department store is. Right kinda. now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right beside Jan Mater. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I've gone to school here most of my life. And I married a local person. So. Who was? Tom Marin. Tom Marin. Everyone knew Tom very well, a bricklayer. Yeah. One of the best bricklayers around. Mm -hmm. And well, where did you live after you married Tom Marin? Um, well, first we were in the service for two years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then we have lived on Silver Creek Road on the Thomas Farm since 1970. Right. Now, the Thomas Farm is one of the oldest farms in Wadsworth, but it was actually started in 1814 by the Long Farm people, sold then to the um, Lucas, and then Mamie, or Mary Lucas, but Mary Mamie Lucas uh, married uh, Louis Thomas, Louis Thomas, and then you bought the farm after all of the people were, bought, were, were gone. Right. Right. The, the mm -hmm. farm. Jan, tell us a little bit about yourself. I was born at home in Akron. Mom didn't know how babies are born, so she wanted to know, so it took me three days to be born. <laughs> anyway, I was raised in Akron, moved out to uh, Wadsworth uh, the, during, after World War II to uh, 261, which is now by the highway, where the highway goes by, and I lived next to Rex Rose at that time in the seventh grade. I graduated from high school, went to Kent State uh, University, studied to be a teacher, met my husband who was a GI. He looked at all these young girls and he picked, picked one. You. <laughs> he picked you. And uh, we rented houses and started our family till they multiplied to the point we had to live out in the country. So we lived in Norton since 1967, have nine children. Nine children. Mm -hmm. 37 grandchildren and Ten great grandchildren. Wow! And he was a teacher at Firestone High School and also Akron U. And he passed away about a couple uh, months middle ago. of November. Middle yes. November, right? Jan, how about how about you? Well, let's see. I was born in Cleveland, Ohio. My father was from Cleveland, <clears throat> and I was born at St. Luke's Hospital. And when <coughs> I was, and my mother was from Wadsworth. She came to Wadsworth with her family. So somehow they got together from Cleveland to Wadsworth, and um, and who was your mother in Wadsworth? Jenny Krupe. Right. Mm -hmm. The Krupe's. My family. Let's spell that because we have to spell everything because people uh, fifty years from now may not know that the family existed. Mm -hmm. C R U P I Krupe, and Logadice was part of my family too, and um, what? Who else? I don't know. Croupy Logodites. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah. And um, <clears throat> let's see. My father uh, 
owned, uh, started and owned the Wadsworth Welding and Machine Company for And your father was? Angelo Mercolata. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, he ran that company for 50 years. I think he did a good job. He, on Mechanic uh, Street. On Mechanic Street, that's right. And he, he learned the welding trade at the Lincoln <coughs> School of Welding. He was very good at his... One of the best. One of the best. The new engine very well. Now, uh, Mechanic Street doesn't exist. Well, I guess it exists. It's but still people, there, and the, and the building is right, still there. And a lot of people may not know where it is, but it's right adjacent to the railroad track on the south side. As a matter of fact, the railroad track is, what, 50 feet away? Uh, yeah. If that, if that, yeah. Right there. Yeah, so south end was... Okay, and then my father built a home. Well, first off, we lived on East Street. You know, us kids, when we were little, you knew all the streets in Wandsworth. Oh, yeah. You just say East Street, Chestnut, Pine. You knew all of them. So um, we lived at a home in East Street. That was my favorite house in all the world. 303 East Street, it burned down, and it's still, and they built it back up again. It's still there. Then my father built a home up on... Uh, my grandfather, Charles Krupe, he had a, somehow he got a hold of a lot of land up, up around that area, Fernwood and Oakwood and all that. Mm -hmm. Which and, was uh, nothing more than, this, uh, than a woods or um, overgrown right. nothing when he bought it. And that's right. Now it's completely filled with houses and streets. And my father built a home there. He built the whole thing himself. He had a bricklayer. Who was the bricklayer? Your husband, and uh, he he uh, he had a bricklayer, but he didn't like the way he did it. So, so he did it himself. I don't know where he got the idea. And I have pictures of it. Beautiful. It was a beautiful home. I miss it very much. And let's see. And I went to a little old uh, Franklin School. Right, was that it? That was fun. Did any of us go to Franklin? Mm -hmm. oh. Do you know where Franklin School was? I surely do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I went to Franklin and then graduated from 1956, and then I went to college for a few years. I was. Uh, my mother insisted that we know music, so I. My brother was a music person, and I still play the piano today. And um, Bob played the piano too. So after college, high school, I went to Bowling Green University for a few years, and I studied music there. Oh, and then um, I met up with uh, Jim Kitzmiller, who I did marry in 19, what was it? I don't, can't remember, <laughs> I can't remember. He's passed away now. He was quite an artist. And um, that's it. What is it? Oh, and then what happened? Oh, um, yeah, I had some surgeries, lost my house, and was at Alder Care for a few years, a few times. After my surgeries, I had six surgeries. You know, life had just happens, doesn't it? Tell us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it just. And uh, so now I live at Menwa Apartments, and you know where Men, you know where Menwa is. I know where Menwa is, right? Exactly right. We're going to come back to all of these, but but right now let's find out about Ruth Schaub, Ruth, well, Ruth the arm. I still call her Ruth Schaub. <laughs> so does most people. Very well. <laughs> I found out at that at my old church. I'm still Ruth Schaub. Oh really? Yeah. I was born in home in Wadsworth. Uh, but tell us where you lived in Wadsworth. That's very interesting. Okay. I lived at 136 West Prospect Street. Okay. My dad came to town and lived up on High Street with Lizzie Guybe. And then when my got married two years later, they lived upstairs in at 136 West Prospect. Who was Until your father? Until the lady, Ira Schaub. Ira Schaub. Everyone my, knew Ira Schaub. Everybody knows Ira. My mother was a Grace Schmid. They S -C -H -M -I -D -T, were both from. right? No, no T. S C H M I D. No T. It's Swiss. Oh, okay. All no, right. no T. No T. All right. Um, we have two Swiss people right here. Your mother was Swiss too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I was when then the lady 
wanted to sell the house a couple of years later, so they bought it. So they've always, always lived there. Um, I was born at home, as I said. Uh, grew up with Smith Dairy, because my dad worked there, and I did too. Um, what year were you born? I was born in 1938. 1938. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all of you were kind of born in 1938, which means that you're like the big 80 this year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We get discounts when we go to the restaurant sometimes <laughs> as a group. <laughs> the big 80. Yeah. Right, and we're going to come back to you again too, Ruth, in a couple of seconds. But between between the or among the four of you here, um, you went to. School in Akron first, but then when you came, mm. uh, nowhere in uh, Delton. Delton, I'm sorry, Delton first. When you came to Wadsworth, where did you go to school? Isham. Isham, which was at that time centralized, centralized school. <laughs> now, one of the things we like to do is to identify the teachers that you had because they're all gone. Every single one oh, of them is yeah. gone. And who were the ones that you had, some of the teachers you had when you went, what grade were you in when you went to Isham? About seventh? Well, I was in sixth grade. Oh, sixth, okay. And of course, we graduated from ninth grade yeah. and then went to the city school. And the reason that it was ninth grade at that time, the state of Ohio had had what was called the uh, six three nine system, which meant you had th uh, six years of elementary school, three years of quote junior high school, and three years of high school. Ooh. That changed in nineteen forty six or seven or something like that. No, no, I'm sorry. It changed 1956 or seven to the 624. So now we have four years of high school. Is that when centralized, like they didn't have ninth grade anymore? No, they didn't. Uh -uh. What year was that? I think in 1950. Because we were there in what, 52, ninth grade, because I was at centralized with her. 56, I grade. think, 56. Okay. Uh, the, the, they mm -hmm. made it the soon. The, it went from the um, 632, uh, 63 to the uh, 624. Mm -hmm. So, now who were the teachers that you had then, Ruth? Oh gosh. Um, who was your George sister? Meyer. Was he, <laughs> yep, he was the principal. Uh, he wasn't at that time, he, he was, was a math teacher. Math teacher. Was it? Yeah. We I had uh, Mrs. Rada for home ec. Oh yeah, Francis Rada. Loved her. Rada and, and yeah. Now let's Meyer is spelled M A Y E R. Mm -hmm. Rada R H O D D A. Yeah. Francis Rada. Mm -hmm. And who else did you? Uh, um, Mrs. Baldwin and I can't. Elva think. Baldwin. Elva, yeah, right. Elva, mm -hmm. Elva Hartman Brittlinger Baldwin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Right, mm -hmm. and who mm -hmm. else? Oh gosh, I gotta think. Oh, uh, Stan Kuhn. Stan Kuhn. Stanley Kuhn, who became mm -hmm. a superintendent at one after afterwards. Um, Biology teacher was Mr. Uh, Metzger. Is that right? Does that sound right? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He had Messner. a handicapped Archer. arm. Right. Uh, that's yeah. the first time I cut up animals. I mean, it was like I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But, but, frogs. You know, frogs and <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, muscles. Oh. Now, how about you, uh, Jan? You have the same teachers, obviously. Yes. Uh huh. Uh -huh. You both went to centralize at that yes. time. Yes, so. uh, I went to 12 schools. Uh, no, I went to uh, nine schools in 12 years because during the wartime, it was, uh, depends on where you moved. You know, my mother was working on uh, building tires at Firestone and my dad was over in Germany. So you moved around according to what lodging you had. So I was at Sacred Heart at seventh and eighth grade for seventh and eighth grade went to centralized for ninth, and 10th, 11th, and 12th was at Central High. Now, why was your father in Germany? He was in the Army. He was a, ended up being a staff sergeant and got a silver silver star wow. being, being wounded in um, In World Germany. War II. World War II, World yes. War II. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jan, how about you? He just passed away not too long ago, Mr. Holcomb, mm -hmm. Ray Holcomb. Very, very fine gentleman. Oh, yeah. Very nice. He did actually have a paddle that had holes in it. Yeah. <laughs> he did. And but you never got spanked because you were no, such a I good didn't, little girl. No, I didn't, some of them did. Um, well, I don't know if they did. Uh, um, Miss Barker, is it Barker? Miss Barker? Yeah. What grade would that have been? Third, maybe. Third? How about your first grade? 
She just passed away not too long ago. Well, how about your first grade teacher? Yeah, I, I can see her, but I don't know if I remember her name. It'll come to you a little bit. How about some of the other teachers that you had <coughs> at Franklin? The piano player. Uh, Hart, Ms. Uh, Ms. Hartman. Ms. Hartman. Mm -hmm. And she used to have a piano that, that they wouldn't do this today, I don't think. They had one piano that they kept rolling around from classroom no, to classroom. No, they would not do that today. No, so they'd have ten. Not allowed to do that anymore. <laughs> piano stays where it stays. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, she'd move it around from classroom to classroom. And then there was a Mr. Jarvella. <clears throat> yeah, I don't remember it. And there was a... Um, I don't know if I can think of any more. Well, uh, after a bit, you, you can. We had a Mr. Lyron in math, I think, in yes. high school. Well, that was in high school. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we could think yeah. high school, yeah. yeah. Gene Lyron. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gene, uh, I know, I had him. He flunked me in algebra. He <laughs> and then I in took algebra? It, <laughs> and then I took it with another lady in the summer school, and I got an A. You remember who it was? <laughs> the lady, she, yeah. I know, she was really nice. She lived on, I don't know. No, I don't remember, but it was summer school, and it was in her backyard. Where was it? I don't know. Mm. Because they, um, <coughs> there was a lady who taught math, yes. and um, uh, she lived on Johnson Road. No, Is that a possibility? No, it was in town. In town, okay. It wasn't the same person then. Ruth, <coughs> your teachers. Miss Wells was my kindergarten teacher. Yep. Mm -hmm. yes. June Brenneman was my first grade teacher. Portia Snyder. Oh, Portia Snyder, right. Was the second <coughs> teacher. And you know what? I don't remember the rest. But <laughs> when I was in fourth grade, I had to transfer to Central and had Dorothy Rohr. Dorothy Rohr. And then for fifth grade was Belle Lytle. Belle Lytle. Who was the also the principal of the, June, of the elementary. elementary. Mm -hmm. And then I went back to um, Lincoln, and I don't remember that teacher. Now, Belle Lytle actually became the princi first principal of um, Overlook School in 1954. Ooh. <coughs> Belle Lytle did. Right. Yeah. <coughs> she, walked, she walked to school every morning. Did she? Mm -hmm. I liked her. I thought she was real. I she didn't care real, for she Dorothy Roy. She was a Roy, very, very fine, fine, yes. strong teacher. Yeah, she was good. Yeah, she was good. Mm -hmm. Her father was a superintendent. Oh. In one of the early days of the before 1898, before 1898, right. yeah. her father was a superintendent. Now, <coughs> neighbors that you had and. We'd like to have as many of the children's names as possible because this then helps to establish where people lived and who the people were so that we have for historical evidence for the next, well, forever, I guess, because now we can put things on digital, whatever that is. <laughs> 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 and that then that lasts forever because you can't uh, you can't destroy numbers or something. I, I think whatever they do with them. <coughs> uh, let's start with you, Jan. Who were some of your neighbors? <coughs> yeah, that Jan right there. Oh okay. yeah, this Jan. Blue Jan. <laughs> well, on E Street we had Jim Christner was one. Yes. Oh. Jim. And then we had Mosier, the Mosiers. Bob Mosier. June Mosier. Oh, June Mosier, okay. I still see her. We still talk about the old time on on uh, East Street. And um, Bowman's, Dickie Bowman. Dickie Bowman, right. He was a friend of my brother. And um, <clears throat> at the end of the street was uh, Sim Cox's. I think that one, one of them just passed away, I believe, one of the boys. Yes, right, he bought, yeah, Carl. Yeah, and... Um, I don't know. And the lady that used to live, she still lives there next door, um, Vicki Conley. You know, Vicki. Oh, my heavens, really? She's still living. Yeah. 
that she lived in that big house there. Mm -hmm. Right, I know where it was. And then when we moved to Fernwood, I don't know. Then we had Betty Bites all. Right, Luke. Luke, yes. Oh, what a wonderful man he was. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I loved him, Luke. If you had a problem with a lawnmower or any problem, he'd be right there to help you. Do you, do you remember Betty's last name, uh, maiden name? I did. I don't know if I can think of it right now. I can in a couple of seconds, but I can't write <laughs> <face> <laughs> oh, no. I know she had a big family. She had quite a few sisters. Her one sister was Marie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that will come it? to us in a second. Oh. I know Betty very well. Yeah. I know. No. She's a great girl. Red Jan. Uh, neighbor across the street's name was Grub. It's the first time I had ever seen someone live in a in a basement house their whole adult life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But there was pay as you go, and she had uh, a hairdressing business down in the basement. Next to them on the east side was Phelps, and then on on my west side were the Rex Roads with the farm, and that was wonderful. One thing I wanted to mention: when we moved to from the city to uh, Wadsworth in this house, our rent was only fifty six dollars a month, and we had fifty six acres to use just just renting at that time. But, uh, Fifty-six dollars now would 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 get you inside the kitchen, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the, but where Ruth said it's now a highway and the big shopping center now. So we had, and I remember going out for hikes in the woods. I love hiking in the woods. And one time I got lost. And <laughs> but anyhow, that's that was our name. Well, obviously you got found because here you are. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you didn't have any neighbors because you had such a big farm. Well, the Frederick Apple or Orchard was right across the street. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, surely. Mm -hmm. um, As a matter of fact, um, she just died. Um, Eileen Frederick. Remember Eileen? Oh. Yeah. Oh, the ones that lived out on... Um, West of town. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't Bells. really know them. That wasn't one of the sons of the Fredericks no, that no, lived. No, huh? Was that Ellis Fredericks? No. Oh, Ellis a was a son of the, son, the oh right, okay yeah. the yeah. Apple people, but um, and Franny and Art Kramer built a house down the road. I used to babysit for their children. Fran Fiscus, Fran Fiscus <laughs> and Art Kramer. Yeah. They but were. then they moved to uh, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Um, and both of them are dead now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were relatives of my uncle John, who married my aunt Sadie. <laughs> who was that? Uh, John Kohler. Oh, John Kohler. Yes, the was cousins. a relative of the Kilmers, the Kramers. Kramers, Kramers. Yeah, his oh, mother. Yeah. His right. mother was a Kramer. Yeah, the Kramers mm -hmm. born in Germany themselves. Mm -hmm. um, there was no one south of you. No. For, for a whole mile. No, right. Uh, so there's no one at all down there. I mean, the neighbors we had were the same ones that she had. No. Except but who was west of you? Um, uh, were the... Um, the no. Baird, oh, Bairds. Uh, they had a, a bunch of daffodils right, over there. Right. Remember that? Um, a whole field of... I think, no, not Bairds. Bairds is the one that owned our property. Yeah, right. Um, Starts uh, with a B. Lulu Nolf lived in the house. Though. Yeah. But... Um, Oh. She was Tom's teacher. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> he mm. wasn't crazy about her. <laughs> but you know, she was a good, wonderful teacher, though. But a uh, little on the strict side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> little on the strict side, yeah. But yeah, it was a, related to the Helds, or Hellers. The Hellers. Was it Heller? Uh, that's right. It was um, Peg Heller, whose real name is Irene. Okay. And she married Dr. Klotz. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That's okay. right. Okay. Yeah, we right. Know. So these are all, the, those are the relationships over there. Mm -hmm. And they were far apart. <laughs> and we didn't have any real close No, uh, what did you have, 160 acres? Um, well, no, part of it was across the road where that big complex is right, now. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know, like that church, some kind of a church thing yes, is over right. there mm -hmm. now. But, um. I think it was. Um, Does she need the it one? was a hundred. It was 
It was pretty big. I think it was 189 acres or was something 100, like I knew that. it was a big one. It was one of the biggest farms, mm -hmm. actually. Actually, the Dutts owned that. And um, my parents rented it for years and then ended now, up. Now, you're talking about George Dutt. Right. Yeah, George Dutt, who lived on Medina County Line Road mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and had himself a 160-acre farm. Mm -hmm. Right. And then he had this other farm that he had purchased the I thought maybe that was inherited. Because well, one of the boys, one of the Dutt boys, owned the part on the other side of the road. It's entirely possible because there were four of the Dutt boys. Uh -huh. And three of them stayed on the farm, and Al Dutt didn't stay on the farm. Mm -hmm. But uh, George, Charlie, and um, the third <laughs> yeah, uh, were I on, the, on the farm. And then uh, their sister, or their, their cousin, um, who married surface was on the far end of the farm on the southeast corner of it, right? Well, well, it would have been uh, on Medina Line Road. Yeah, Medina Line yeah. Road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, dies. I remember they were on the oh yeah right at the corner of County Line Road and two sixty one. Yeah, right. Who, Charlie D Guy? D Y E is the last oh, name. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Porter Baird owned our property. Yeah. That's where the name came. And I remember yeah. uh, yeah. old time farmer on the opposite side of that corner, Charlie Lotzenheiser. Yep. Old bachelor, you know, uh, knew everything about planting things. When we were city slickers coming out and doing our own garden, the package of corn said plant six together and then then thin them out and he laughed he says that's trying to sell seeds of corn you know <laughs> pan that goes together but porter baird owned that property that we rented from and then carol good who was a family in front of us who was also a teacher at, at wadsworth they were the family before us cooper. they moved cooper the cooper. cooper carol mm -hmm. cooper carol yeah. cooper oh. and we came in after that so it's kind of a close-knit family they were the same classes us and carol cooper's in carol cooper's class? in our class yes right and mr mr cooper was uh, teacher. the teacher. He, he was teacher and they and then porter baird had moved in uh, downtown uh, wadsworth and and charlie lotzenheiser the farmer said everything porter baird touched turned to gold because he sold a part of his property to a church down mm -hmm. there. <laughs> so he, then he moved up on the hill by the water tower uh, on 261, Mr. Porter Baird. He sold it to the um, uh, Bigelow Chapel. I don't know, it was yeah. a church, I know, part of his property yeah, there. Bigelow so. Chapel, yeah. is, Porter he Baird, out. is Porter Baird still here? No. Uh -huh. Oh, no, no, no. my heavens, he's he been dead for 70, 60, 70 years, hasn't he? No, long not that time. long. Not that sure? long, because he lived a pretty long age. Yeah. But it's yeah. a long time ago. Yeah, I remember. Ruth, you've been so quiet down there. <laughs> Tell us about your neighbors. Well, we had several neighbors live two houses down on the corner. Which, which uh, corner, though? Party and Prospect. Okay, Party and West Prospect. Prospect. West Prospect, okay, that's across the prospect to the cemetery. Prospe right, to the cemetery, <laughs> right. Because the cemetery As a matter of fact, there. didn't um, Coopers live down there that after a while? Oh, they built they on lived Baldwin. up on Baldwin. Oh, Baldwin was the Baldwin. Two streets okay. over. Oh, two yeah. streets over. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. There was a Perkins. I think Bakers lived there when Which we Perkins did. Which Perkins would it be? Would be the boy's it. name was Jim. I don't know the parent's name. Oh. Um, that would be um, Russell Russell Perkins. If his name is his, he had one son, yes. big boy. Yeah. Yeah, that was Russell Perkins. His his first name was James also, but the, he went by Russell. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he was the son of Everett Perkins. Well, uh, um, Everett yeah. Senior, not Everett Junior. Okay. Yeah. Well, we were kids, so we didn't know the parents' first names. No, of course not. <laughs> they were on the corner, and then uh, Culbertsons were in the next one up, and they had one son, Burdett, mm -hmm. and I, he was in the service, and I remember that it was all excitement. He's coming home, he's coming home. And I was outside, ah. and he walked down the street and went in, and I ran in the house and told Mom, Burdett's home, Burdett's home. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, then us, and then Grace and Paul Calum, and they had Marilyn, Ed, and Jean. Right, and um, she was a teacher at, um, 
Sharon, wasn't she? And also in Wadsworth, uh, Grace was. She had red I, hair. If she was, it was before I knew. She was at Isham, I think. Was she at Isham then? Too? Grace yeah. Caleb had red hair. Yeah. And he was a milkman. Yep. He right. was the milkman for Smith Dairy. Right. Um, Grace was related to my mother, but kind of back a little bit, yeah. not real close. She was a geyser, I believe. Um, then was Ethel Bear, who was a widow yeah. lady. Yeah, and B A E R. Yeah, B A E R. Yeah. Then um, there was there was a duplex, and Mrs. Johnson and her daughter. Oh shoot, I can't remember her daughter's name, but she was a photographer, and oh, later yes, had a studio down on uh, Maple Street. Right, right, right. They lived there. And then um, the next one in there was a Muma. Muma. And then Walter, their son, lived next door. Who's that? Walter. Walter. Is that, Is that mine? Mm. I thought I turned them off. Um, lived next door. Right. And they had one daughter. Oh, I can't remember her name now. Phyllis? Then I, no. Then, um. Well, yeah, Phil, it was Phyllis. You're right. She married uh, Jean, Jean Waddell. Waddell, who yeah. ended up being my Say cousin. Say that again. Uh, was Phyllis married to Jean Waddell? Who ended up to be my cousin? Phyllis who? Phyllis Mumma. Oh, Phyllis Mumma. Oh, yes, married your cousin. Yes, uh, yeah. Jean Waddell. Yeah. Yeah. And I worked with Jean a while, so no. I knew him too. Mm -hmm. um, oh, then right. Styers. Norma. Norma. And. <laughs> and um, um, yeah, I can't remember her. I knew Norma better because the other one, her sister was older. Right. Um, so she played piano. Yep. Uh, yep. It'll come to me also. I can't think of the. Um, I'm still trying to think a bit. Can't right. remember who lived up on the corner. But the third house up was where Lizzie Guy, Mrs. Guy, and her daughter Flossie lived, and that's where my dad rented. Mm -hmm. So we often went up through the backyards to visit. Remember when she had a little small barn and had chickens in it? She did indeed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Across the street, um. there was a Riggs. Um, they had children, and I don't, a Jerry? I'm not sure. Who was that again? Riggs, R-I-G-G-S. Oh, I remember the name, but I don't know the I, kids. There's somebody in there before that, too, and I don't remember. Yeah. Um, there was another house, and then um, there were two houses down. Then the third house down from there was uh, Maddie Dressler. Oh, yes. Maddie oh, Dressler. yes. Uh -huh. she, she had coal oil to get thing, screws out and stuff, and they never knew what coal, coal oil was till later. It's kerosene. Kerosene. <laughs> <Yeah>. oh. <laughs> but she called it coal oil. That's what we always okay. called it coal oil. Yeah. She was very old. She to us, she was very old when we sh when we she lived there. Now she probably was not nearly so old yeah. as you people are right now. <laughs> exactly. Perspective changes. <laughs> well, she might have been close to it. Um, all right, the name next door left, and the next one was a blank, uh, empty lot, and it had a catalpa tree in it. And we loved it because the branches were low and we could climb clear up to the top of the tree. <laughs> couldn't, we couldn't do that now, could we? No, there's a <laughs> duplex in there now. And we couldn't climb it anyway. Right. Then the Fleck sisters lived on the corner. Who? Fleck. Yes, right, the Fleck yeah. sisters. Yeah. And um, Bateses lived on across the street. Aldifers, Mrs. Aldifer lived there and then her son lived next door. And across the street there was um, Hackenberg's. Bev was my age, was older, a little bit older than me. Her sister was quite a bit older. Then she had an older brother too. Okay, I did yeah. not know him. There's a lot of Hackenberg. Uh, there was a Ma Mason. Which Mason? Jim Mason. I don't know his name. No, probably. They had a son, but I don't remember his Jim, name either. Probably. Mm -hmm. Could be. Um, we had a, I just went over these not too long ago. There was a Flath across the, Which straight Flath? down from Dick me. Which Flath or um, Joan Flath? 
not sure. They had a grand, their daughter married, was name was Anne, and she married a Rex, and their daughter was Rex Anne. I don't remember. Different, different then, flat family. Um, Annabelle Davis. Okay. The Davis family. I think her name was Nellie, but I don't remember. Annabelle was the daughter. <coughs> she had a brother. No. She had a sister, Donna Pearl, who married a Weckbucker, Myron Weckbucker. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Then, um, I think it was Liberts. Their son was Bill. Homer. Could have been. There again, as a kid, you don't know first names of yeah. adults. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then Clifford's lived on the corner. Um, and then the cemetery. And we had a bunch of, we had several older boys. And so they get to play kick and can down on the corner at the cemetery. Well, the cemetery. And I can remember being in that, but we were the younger kids. We didn't. Well, we weren't allowed to play with them. Well, we, we did. We did some, yeah. But yeah. we and then they'd hide in the cemetery mm -hmm. until the until a bunch of guys come along that'd been drinking, and then we all went <laughs> home. <laughs> did uh, living close to the cemetery bother you at all? No, no. Not at all. We used to go down, um, the, the street, Beck Street did not go clear up to Baldwin, but we would, it, there was a, a, like an entrance in and there was a ball field in there for a while. And down at the creek, we'd like to go down and look for crayfish and things. But sometimes we went down and, uh oh, we're not going today. The bums or the hobos oh, would yeah. be no, down oh, yeah. at the creek. I was going to say that <laughs> you had a lot of company to... down yeah, there. Yeah, the we had company right. sometimes. Yeah. But it was so thick down in there at that time that you didn't know they were there until you got close. Now, we had uh, those people, the bums or the hobos, I guess you're supposed to call them now, were up there. Homeless. And then in Silver Creek, we had what was called the bums orchard. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know that you did. Yeah, where, they, where people actually camped out and mm -hmm. they had a little organization. Mm -hmm. At an organization, and the trains would be going by so very, very slowly that they could jump off and on them wherever they wanted to. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, I was surprised that we had them where we did because the we were north of the square, and the railroad was clear down the south end. Yeah, that's true. we so. were next to the railroad, and they, they would come up, and my mother fed them. Mm -hmm. I remember giving them butter and bread and butter and stuff. Is this during the Depression? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. yes. They um, they seem to have they no, way to, no way no, no way to prove it, but they seem to have a a, a system of no, knowing who would give them food and oh, who yeah. wouldn't. Yeah. They would go from this house to four houses later, and then two houses later, and maybe eight houses later. Mm -hmm. They know exactly where to go. And I can give you some hints on that. Well, how's that, my? Um, I was invited down to Newcomers Town to a hobo dinner. Oh. And they had a fella who has done a lot of research, and he gave a lot of information. They would have a way of marking. They marked a tree. Dog. How okay. They... Dog, stay away. Okay. Um, we'll feed. We'll not. Uh, just lots. There were twenty some different signs that they would leave on a pole, on a fence, anywhere that told them whether or not this was a good place to go. Well, our house must have been one of those that said yes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Ours too. <laughs> because uh, every single day during the Depression, we yeah. had a bum come by and my, my, my mother would give them something, you know, so. Now, we, we have just a few more minutes left here, but we have to get some very, very important things. And I need to tell you ahead of time, Make sure that you get these things accurate because if you can't remember your grandchildren's names, you will not have a happy life from here on after. <laughs> now, children, what they do, names, and how old they are, and grandchildren. Start with Ruth, this Ruth, Ruth okay. Marin. I have a son and two daughters. Marty, who's named after his grandfather, uh, Martin, Martin. Martin Marion. Martin Marion. Mm -hmm. And he has three daughters that are all in college. He has 
one dog that we just found out has cancer. <laughs> wow. So we're very sad about that. But um, then my second child is a girl. And her name is? Her name is Monique Marin Chapman. And she's married to Rick Chapman, has no children, lives on um, <laughs> Simcox. And then Megan, who is 16 years younger than Megan, lives with me out at the farm on Silver Creek. And what does she do? She is a pharmacy tech. At she actually works for Ritzman's. Ritzman's. My wife's favorite person. Oh, yeah, she's a, she's a pretty nice girl. Oh, she's a sweetheart. <laughs> and my, uh, my grandchildren are Alexis Marin, Rachel Marin, and Ellie Marin. And where do they live? Well, Alexis is tutoring in the inner city in New Jersey. Okay. She wants to go to medical school. And Rachel lives at home. She was going to take, well, she was in um, Wyoming for two years going to school, but she's home now. And Ellie is at Ohio U. Okay. Uh, three grandchildren. That's the only three, yeah. And I only have three. And you're sure you have 23? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I asked this question to every person, and one of them said after. They couldn't think of his grandchildren's names, and he said, <laughs> if I would have known that you were going to ask me these hard questions, I would have boned up on this a little bit. <laughs> <coughs> now, Jan next. Jan Red. Well, maybe I should be last. Um, <laughs> the, the, the oldest one, Art Nutter, has uh, eight children. He lives in Colorado Springs. Okay. Uh, and... Uh, you want their children right off the bat? Uh, yeah. Well, anyhow, no, go if with my children, I have Art is the oldest in Colorado Springs. The second oldest is Kathleen in Mammoth Lakes, California. Uh -huh. She has two children. Okay, uh, third one is Charles Nutter, lives down in Upper Arlington, uh, Ohio, Columbus, and he has three. Charlie. Maureen lives in Norton right next to me, and she has four uh, in, in Norton. Uh, Colleen uh, is, uh, has five. She lives in uh, Columbus. Bernard lives in um, Pickerington, Ohio, and he has three. I have to think in order. Pickering. Martha, no, wait, we skipped one. Rhonda, Rhonda <laughs> lives in Dublin and has five. And uh, Martha lives in uh, Lancaster and she has four. And I have a bunch of names, but maybe you should go to the other ones. <laughs> well, we, we haven't come to nine children yet. You're, that's only eight. You missed one. Oh, Philip. Oh, I have a Down syndrome <laughs> who's, uh, who, yeah, he's not married. The only one is not married, and he lives in West Akron. That's Down nine. syndrome. That's nine. Okay. We want to make sure, because, right. boy, if you miss one, you <laughs> right, will never right. hear the end of right. it. <laughs> and like I said, we ha I have 37 grandchildren, so that would take their time, I think, probably, <laughs> to name them all. But, but they've all worked their own way through college, which was a uh, pat on our back, we thought. We, we, didn't, we couldn't pay for their college education, but all of them went to college. That's wonderful. Except the boy. Down Syndrome boy. The what? Except the Down Syndrome boy. He didn't go to college. Okay. But, mm -hmm. um, well, good okay. for him. Okay. Jan. I have nothing to tell you. I don't have any children. No grandchildren. no grandchildren. One thing I want to say, when we have luncheons with all these people with their children, well, I'm very proud to be their friend and everything, but it's, I don't have anything to talk about. And they're all chattering about their grandchildren and all that, and what do I, I'm not, I don't have anything to Well, talk actually, about. Jan, you would be very popular in many circles because a lot of people don't like to hear about a lot of children. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be very popular. Uh -huh. That's good. She is anyhow. She is right. Oh, um, thank you. Ruth. <laughs> I have three children. The oldest is Jeff. He's married with no children and lives in Alaska, has since 1980. Oh, wow. Um, have you ever been up there? I've her? been up nine times. Nine oh times. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Not for quite a few years now, but yeah. Oh, my goodness. 
um, Daryl, D-A-R-O-L. Okay. Lives in, was in Colorado, now is in Texas, and will shortly be in Oklahoma. Um, he has three girls. The oldest is Keely. She's an, an RN and has two children. Um, Kate is just married a year, year and a half ago. And she's in Texas. Keely's actually in Nevada now. Or no, yeah, Nevada. Um, and then Kara is the youngest, and she's in the Air Force in Nebraska. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. The Air Force. Mm -hmm. What does she do in the Air Force? She is in intelligence on an airplane. That's. But she doesn't fly the airplane or anything like she that. She doesn't fly the airplane, no. But, but she's, she's on an airplane. She's part of the crew. I see. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we have taken care of the grandchildren. We have taken care of the children. We have taken care of the neighbors. <laughs> now, we need to hear a little bit about yourselves. And you, we gave a brief description of each of you at the very beginning. But we're going to start with Ruth at that end over there. This, this, we always start with this end over here. We're going to start with your end over there. And tell us some of the memories that you have that probably are unique. In other words, probably no one else would have them. I'll give you an example. Uh, <clears throat> when I was in the first grade, I went to the library. We went to, on a field trip to the library. And at, the, at that time, the library was this house in Wadsworth, and, uh, which is where the library presently That's stands. That's right, Ella. And, and uh, there were two librarians there. Mrs. Woodward is one, and I can't think of the name of the other person. And I know. They always had their... Sh I know. Sh 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 so the teacher, who was Bertha Kuhn, now dead, of course. All of my teachers are dead, unfortunately. But they, <clears throat> we had to get a library card. Yes. So... We couldn't write because we were first graders, mm -hmm. so the, the person would have to write for us. <laughs> Went up there and she said, what is your name? And I said, my name is Cesar Carino. She thought for a second, she said, we have a lot of books about you oh. in our library. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I thought to myself, wow. <laughs> I have a lot of books in the library. Of course, she was talking about Caesar. And I was no, she said, what is your middle name? And I said, Augustus. She so, says, we have a lot of books about Caesar Augustus in the library. Oh, <laughs> and I thought, for my heavens, they, have, written, they have books written about me. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I kept that thought for about two minutes until the teacher said, they're not talking about you. They're talking about the emperor Caesar Augustus. So. Now, that's the memory that I have. That kind of a memory. Something really stands out in your mind. Um, some of the things were, one of the things that stands out in my mind, it's a memory, was when my mother wanted milk from the milkman, oh. she would put out the quart bottles, how yeah. many she wanted, That's right. and set a little off aside, and that was for Mellow Rich. Now, it's not Mellow Rich today, but with Smith Dairy, it was then. And it's now half and half. Half and half, right. So, and we had a bread man. Who was the mailman? Paul who Wise. Was your, who was your um, milkman? Uh, Glenn Kaufman. Glenn Hoffman. And then it was a Dairy a Gale, too. Yeah. Glenn then, Kaufman was, and then the bread man was Paul Wise. Paul Wise. He, did he, didn't Paul Wise drive the Sterling Baker truck? He drove a bakery truck, and I don't Sterling remember. Truck, it could yeah. have very well been. Wise, City yes. was one company yeah. that came to the house with bakeries. City Bakery. City Bakery did as well, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't remember. It might have been City Bakery. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. um, I remember um, my dad and Don Close and Russ Semmelsberger had a trucking company for a short time. And Russ Summerberger, who had Bob's Hamburger at one time. Oh, Bob's Hamburger. Well, yeah. All I know is it was the restaurant that. over on Main Street. Yeah, that's Bob's yeah. Hamburger. Yeah. Okay. I didn't. I just knew it as Samuel's Burgers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he and Don Close and my dad had the trucking <coughs> company called CRS. Didn't have it very long, just a few years, but they tried. Um, I started working at the dairy because my dad was a manager when I was in seventh grade because I'd go over and hang out with him and to get me out of his hair, he says, get a job. I'm gonna have, <laughs> I'm gonna put you to work. 
I'm going to pay you 10 cents an hour. You are to clock in, and he showed me how to do it, and go sweep the garage. <laughs> so I, did, I started there and worked all through high school. Good um, job. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, I remember having the great big cherry tree on the west side of the house, and we always often had rabbits uh, nesting in it. And the trick was to keep the dog out of the rabbits. <laughs> yeah, the dogs would like to right. have a rabbit. <laughs> we also had a raccoon. My brother was down a, on my grandfather's farm, the Shout Farm, and he was down in the woods and found a tree with a baby raccoon in it. So he went and got grandma to go down and they got the raccoon out of the tree and they cut it down got the raccoon out and he brought it home and we had it for a few a couple of years as a pet at home oh, a raccoon a no. raccoon I, thought you said really I have a son who would probably say that the one of the raccoon's grandchildren has burrowed a hole in his house <laughs> Well, not that raccoon, because that, that raccoon Mike? ended yeah. up being down at Riceland at the golf course. Oh, I see. We're real close there. Is that Mike? Jan, how about your memories? Well, you should have a million of them. I should. Well, yeah. From school or what? Anywhere, what anywhere. Music? You were so good at music. <laughs> well... There is one story, and it's horrible. It really is a horrible story. Well, let's hear it. <laughs> but if you, <laughs> but if, you, if Bob Noble walked in here because he was in my, our class, he, that's what he would tell me every time I'd see him. He'd tell me about this story. I saw Bob Mo Noble yesterday. <laughs> well, you, <laughs> he didn't say anything about your story, so you have to tell it. <laughs> it's horrible. I was in class, and I don't remember what class, maybe, the, I don't know, fourth grade or something. <laughs> remember these little pencils that used to come on a calendar? Yes, right. And uh -huh. they were teeny tiny little right. things. Mm -hmm. Well, in class, <laughs> this is how it's got to I swallowed one of those <laughs> And I went up to the teacher and I said, <laughs> <laughs> said I swallowed a pencil. She said, you did what? <laughs> said, I, I don't know. They didn't even know the Heimlich maneuver then, did they? I mean, how did you get a pencil out of something? I don't know, I do. I had had it out like this, and so I went down. Were you hungry, or? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said, yes, I swallowed the pencil. Well, I just went home, and I didn't tell my mother. Oh. <laughs> I was scared to tell her. But one of the other children's, but, well, it, was no, uh, it wasn't Noble. I forget what other parent told my because Bob Nova went home and told his parents, and everybody was talking about it. So somebody told my mother, and I remember she was on the phone. I heard her say, she did what? <laughs> <laughs> and she put the phone down. She ran. What did you do? You, I, I did, Mother. I swallowed a pencil. Well, she called the doctor, of course, and the doctor said, feed me lots of bread. Oh. And push it breath. through, <laughs> push it through, <laughs> oh. and it did come out, <laughs> and it was there wasn't a bit, there wasn't a bit of paint on it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> did you use it in school then? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. But you know, it's the funniest thing to this day. I've had some problems with my. No, I've had surgery, I've had some problems, and I wondered if it goes back to the pencil. Oh, dear. Oh, and you say you have no memories. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. My heavens. <laughs> Jan, can you top that one? 
Well, mine was more normal. I was the oldest, <laughs> of, <laughs> oldest of five kids, and if we uh, and money was scarce at that time among many people. They just had one car. So if we wanted to have money, we had to earn it. And I remember selling uh, greeting cards, yeah. and you had to get the money up front when, when a customer ordered something mm -hmm. before they got the cards. And I remember walking, uh, this was in Akron, walking across a big field and losing the money somewhere and then coming back and trying to find it. And I thought, well, I have to wait until I die to find what, where that money is. <laughs> but when I moved out to Wadsworth, we uh, picked it? strawberries uh -huh. and it was eight cents a quart. Then we went out to Chrislip uh, Peach Orchard right. and we got 10 cents a half <coughs> for <coughs> picking apples, <coughs> uh, I mean peaches. And uh, I remember I never was constipated with that job. <laughs> <laughs> then we picked a green beans. Dan with you. <laughs> we picked green beans. It was ten cents a half bushel then, and all oh, that was hard work. Ten cents a half bushel of green beans. It took hours for that, mm -hmm. but uh, that it wasn't much babysitting. But I remember uh, planting corn and trying to decide which was a weed piece of grass and which was a stalk of corn yeah, sure. when it's only two inches high and then cutting down the wrong thing. We also had to walk to Grandview Pool at that time because there was only one car and, and we had to get our chores done before we went. So uh, my sister and I would be hoeing the corn and then walk and then stay all day at Grandview Pool. How about Ruth? Well, of course I'm from a family of eight I'm number five, and we always had chores, always a big garden, so we picked a lot of things at our own home, but we went to the Han farm uh -huh. and picked strawberries. John Hahn, and way on the, the, um, on, on um, Medina, Medina Line, Line Road, nice. yeah. east side of the road, which but is now they, housing development. They would have a, John would go into town and pick up kids, with, and they'd ride on the back of his truck, and they'd um, all come and pick strawberries and stuff, but then they would all be going home to swim and we'd be going home to make hay. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this has been such a delightful group of people on the <laughs> heavens, with, and Jan, you made the day for us. That's wonderful. <laughs> Just, if I, anywhere I see Bob, in a restaurant, anywhere, he comes up to me and tells me that story again. It's a good thing it wasn't a pen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. It's been wonderful having this group with us for 1956, graduated in 1956, and all of you will be 80 years old this year. Bless you all. Thank you very much again. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.